YouTube, what is good? Danny Mulligan here. Today I'm bringing you another Whiteboard Wednesday. We're talking about is there such thing as overtraining? Because lots of people say there are no such thing as overtraining. Is it true? Is there no such thing as overtraining? Well, I'm going to try to cover this subject in under five minutes and bring you the hardcore information, the information that you need to know to decide whether you're overtraining or not, if there's actual such thing as overtraining, and can I get to the bottom of this? Well, first and foremost, is there such thing as overtraining? Well, if you're listening and you think there is no such thing as overtraining, this is going to be a hard pill to swallow because it's absolutely false. There is such thing as overtraining. And if you're listening and you think, oh, well, I train hard, what does he know? I tell you the likelihood is you're not training hard enough or you're not training smart enough because there is such thing as overtraining. And if you don't, if you think that you don't overtrain, then you're probably not that clever at training or you've never trained hard ever. So, and we'll explain that why. So first and foremost, what does overtraining look like? Well, overtraining, I've created a tick sheet. And this is quite a good little task because if one of them's occurring, you probably overtraining isn't occurring. But if several of them are occurring, then the likelihood is overtraining is probably occurring. So the first and foremost is lacking motivation, right? So if you could tick that, we, could, we all lack motivation when we go to the gym, or lots of us do, um, that might not mean you're overtraining. But you know, before your workout, if every workout consistently you feel tired, you feel sluggish, and then you're having to push yourself to get through the workout, that could be a sign you're overtraining. If you're training every day, again, this could be a sign you're overtraining. But it's not 100% a sign you're overtraining, and we're going to talk about it in a bit, but intensity and volume are really what govern if you're training every day. Because we can all agree, if we go for a light stroll, there's some form of training, but it's not going to increase that much fatigue. So you can probably do that every day, and you won't be overtraining. So yes, if you are training every day, you might be overtraining, but you might not be. But if you're doing it, it's another tick. So then, this is a big one, a real big one. Maximum intensity every day. If we can tick that, it's a good sign that we're overtraining. We've all heard of the Bulgarian uh, squat program, and the really infamous program, and you know they, they ruled the Olympics for a very long time. And they, you know, they squat every day, every day program kind of thing. And the, it was maximal one rep maxes every single day in the gym. And you know, they won Olympics, and maybe they were doing it right because they were squatting every day. But then, you know, years later, we discovered they were all on steroids, so they were getting that recovery in, which is something we'll talk about in a bit. So the likelihood is, if you are natural, that is, and you're training maximum intensities every day, even if you take steroids too, the likelihood is you are probably overtraining. Reduced performance, and that's consistent reduced performance, not just one off session. Don't think you're overtraining if you do go in the day and you have a bad day in the gym, but if, it, if it's continuous over several weeks, then the likelihood is you're overtraining. Plateau and results. Again, remember this is consistent, hence it's a plateau, because results aren't linear like we want them to, you know. You know I mean, we want strength to continue to go up, but actually doing that is probably a bad, <laughs> the quickest way to not having strength go up. Sessions should vary in intensity, so it shouldn't go in one linear line, you know. It should do a bit of this, but over the long haul, go up. Um, but yeah, if it's a consistent plateau or downward, then the likelihood is you're overtraining. Constant fatigue, okay? Now, constant fatigue is that, again, it boils back to that lack of motivation where you feel a bit beat up and you're having to push yourself through every workout and you feel tired during the day and it's taking them more of an impact of your day more than normal training would. It's a big, big sign. And that goes along the hand with chronic aches. These aches that just don't seem to disappear. You know, your shoulders have been beat up for weeks and you're just continuously plowing your way through exercises or you're continuously getting injured. Yeah, that is a good sign that you may be using maximum intensities every day and you're not recovering enough and, you know, chronic aches. Increased stress, that goes a given. The, you mean, training is very stressful uh, and you, you do more of it, it's going to increase your stress, probably re reduce recovery on the back side of it and you're struggling to recovery, which will increase stress. Uh, lots of reasons why too much training will increase stress. Reduce sex drive, massive one. If your sex drive is just dwindling, dwindling down, the likelihood is you're probably overtraining um, because you know it really is 
having an increased sex drive that can give you that maximal intensity in it. And again, it boils down to all of these. You know, if, you, if performance is increasing, or do I sex drive is pretty high, you know what I mean? It kind of, they all have the kind of knock-on effect. So we can tick all them, we can tick that, and then you don't have to tick all of these, by the way. You know, some, some people might always, you know, they're horny rabbits and they might always have a high sex drive, but, you know, they feel really beat up and demotivated and they're training every day and they're killing it, and they're, but their performance is slipping all the time, then maybe they're, they're overtraining. And then a big, another one is reduced hunger. Reduced hunger goes hand in hand with overtraining and under eating, and it's a big one for me, hunger and sex drive and stress, you know, and quality of sleep as well. The quality of sleep was not put in there, but if that's disturbed too, that's a really big deal. But this is where the lines get blurred. You see, if you were under resting, and this is the thing, are you actually under resting? That would be the question. Because if you were under resting, you'd probably be lacking motivation, that's for sure. You know, your, your performance will be reduced because you're not getting the recovery you need. Plateau in results, you might be constant fatigue, you might get aches and pains. Sex time will be reduced without the sleep, you know. Reduced hunger. So, are you actually under resting? That would be the next question. And th 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 this is where we get into it and you'll find the answer yourself. Or, are we overreaching? Because lots of people who say they're overtraining, you know, they think they're overtraining. And the odds are they're probably not overtraining, they are just overreaching. And I'll explain the difference in a sec, and it's really quite an easy way to understand it. But overtraining doesn't happen over a week, really. Overtraining happens over several weeks, and, can, and it means several overreaching weeks and overreaching sessions happen to overtraining. Because when people think they're overreaching, that's actually a good thing. We need to overreach in order for improvement. Overreaching is doing more than you've physically done before. But what people do is they do a week of overreaching, right, and then they think they've overtrained. Well, what if you followed that week with two weeks rest? You haven't overtrained. You, you know what I mean? If you look at the three weeks total, you're probably undertrained. So this is where the education needs to come in and the understanding hopefully you'll get from. So, training at the right intensity and volume. This is the important bit, okay? We have what's called functional overreaching, and I've called it functional because that is when you call planned overreaching. You don't have to do planned overreaching because if you, you know, if you're starting to feel a bit beat up, like you've done too much that week, and then you take a deload to dissipate that fatigue, you know, you just figured out that you were overreaching, and then you dissipate the fatigue and had a rest week or a, a deload week. So that would be called like non-functional overreaching, but or you've an unplanned functional overreach. But functional overreaching is where you actually have that foresight to pre-plan when you're going to have them harder weeks and when you're going to have the easy weeks or the easier sessions. So if we look here, and I'll get you to zoom in here, of this one week diagram, and this line running down the middle here, we call this our MRV. And that's what's called our maximal recoverable volume, basically the math work we can get, we can do and recover from, the most amount of work we can do and recover from, the maximum amount of recoverable volume. And this is what's called functional um, overreaching. And so functional overreaching is, you know, look at these sessions here. This is what, what, what uh, a week would look like when you functionally overreach in one session. So you see we've, you know, we've overreached there, we've overreached there, but we're under our MLV here. But on average, so if we didn't overreach here, we're not asking our body to do more than it's physically capable of. If we always stay under, we're never overreaching, and you understand the principle of overload, is to do more than you've previously done for. And if you never do that in one set, in one session, in one week, you're never going to improve. Because if we look at a month, you know, never at any point, you know, we're not overreaching here, we're way under. We're way under our MRV here, we're at our MRV here, and then we overreach here. But we only do it for one week because then we deload. So then we get that recovery in. So functional overreaching absolutely has its place. You know, we overreach in one session or a few sessions in the week, and then the whole week as a whole, you're around at a maximal recovery volume, but we're not always over exceeding it, so we're going to have some easier sessions at varying intensities. And then, you know, in a month, we overreach the odd week, maybe the last week in the month, so that we can then deload to dissipate that fatigue that we've built up. So overreaching absolutely has its place, but this is the problem. Overtraining is basically consistent overreaching. So if we look at one week, 
you see, we're right up at our MRV for most of the sessions, and, and, and three of them, and four of them, are, uh, five of them actually, are overreaching our MRV. So then, we're never actually getting the recovery in, and the likelihood is, even though you're at over your MRV, uh, the maximum recovery volume, you've actually brought over the weeks your MRV down because you're not getting the recovery at the back end, you're not being able to do as much work and as much hard sessions because it's hard sessions, it's the overload sessions that actually lead to adaptation. Because you see, if you're always overreaching, you're not going to recover enough for your next hard session and, you, and that then you won't, you won't increase more weight more reps, more volume, and that is what increases muscle mass, uh, whatever it is you're doing, that's how you improve through overloading sessions, through the hard sessions. So, and if we look at a month now, you know, a month, every week's either at our MLB or over our MLB. We never deload, and we just continuously keep plowing on. And again, like I said, your actual total volume or intensity might be quite low. The volume might be quite high because you might start to turn into that trash volume, you know, where you're doing hundreds and hundreds of reps in the gym just to make up for the fact that you can't lift very heavy. But there is absolutely 100% overtraining, and that's what it looks like. It's consistently going above what we're physically capable of, and it's consistent overreaching. But we do need, so overreaching absolutely has to happen, but we need to make sure we're also getting the rest in the back end and we're monitoring that fatigue session to session, week to week, and that we're also monitoring these things. Our performance is increasing, because that's a big one. If performance isn't increasing, then your training is not working. That's a really simple understanding to get hold of, but please take that, that as a takeaway message. Whenever you're programming for yourself, and this is why hiring a coach will make this happen, is that they will make sure performance is increasing, you know, body fat's coming down, muscle mass is going up, um, we're lifting heavier over time. And if those things are happening, you're probably not overtraining. So I hope that clears that up. The takeaway message is, is you do need to overreach, but do train at varying intensities and monitor fatigue, monitor things like sex drive, monitor hunger. Think that training as a whole isn't, monitoring your training as a whole and just having your program right isn't enough to do good scheduled training. You need to look at the recovery in the back end. You need to look at total protein consumption, which is a subject for another day. You need to make sure that you're getting between seven and nine hours sleep, ideally at least eight hours sleep. And you need to monitor stress and make sure stress and hunger, hunger's still high, stress is still low, and you're in a pretty good situation. So if you enjoyed today's video, guys, please don't forget to comment any questions you might have on today's subject. Anything else you'd like to hear, please don't forget to like, Please don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, see ya.